we'll we'll start at eight oh three. So just uh, just letting everyone know, uh, waiting for folks to filter in. Welcome, everyone. We'll be starting shortly. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for uh, attending the ASB MBA info session and our alumni panel. Um, while we love to share information, we also try to give you some real life, spontaneous content. And um, our alums are probably the best representatives of what the ASB experience is all about. And so we're excited to host this event for you all today. Um, one of the things we get a lot of questions about is what's going on with, in Malaysia with regards to uh, the recovery. And the situation continues to improve in Malaysia. Cases are down about 65 to 70%. Uh, I think we were at a high of 24,000 cases per day. And now we're in the 7,000 range and trending down. A lot of that is due to the vaccination rate uh, being in the 70% range for um, um, adults. And as a result of this, class is starting uh, on campus next week in person. And so while we still have some students out of the country, uh, the students inside the country will be able to participate in person, so we're excited about that. And then we're in the process of planning uh, our own MIT immersions for our Masters of Central Banking program. They'll be going to the United States and MIT for about six weeks uh, at the end of the year, around November uh, through December. And then uh, when they come back, uh, we'll be taking our full-time MBA students there for January and parts of February. And so. And uh, after that, they'll be coming back through Dubai and we'll do a, a career trek in Dubai. So uh, exciting times at ASB. And so overall, you know, really wanna talk about our value proposition. We are seeking frontier minded and impact oriented individuals who are really looking to build a global career. And when you have a chance to look at our MBA panel here, you'll see uh, a really diverse uh, representation of students from different parts of the world working in different parts of the world. And there are four critical pieces that make our MBA uh, value proposition different. The first is that MIT Sloan DNA. Um, our program is built on the globally acclaimed uh, MIT Sloan core curriculum. While in the program, our students spend about one third of their courses with MIT faculty. Um, we have a flexible curriculum in which students can graduate in either 16 or 20 months. Uh, one of the things that's different from when all of these individuals were here uh, in the MBA program is that we've uh, added an entrepreneurial track to the MBA curriculum in which every semester the students do something. Uh, it's a progressive kind of cumulative approach to entrepreneurship, uh, you know, that helps better position our students to who are entrepreneurial minded or want to start a new venture to really get that process kicked off at the beginning of the program. And then we're launching new concentrations in finance and analytics and supply chain really to meet the market need of uh, emerging trends that we see here in the region. Now, for those who don't know, action learning is our signature differentiator when it comes to the MBA program. And I think it's the single greatest uh, uh, contributing factor to the success that our alums today have experienced. Uh, action learning uh, is project-based learning that we do every semester in our MBA programs. Uh, and what it's really trying to deliver in that program is 
to teach students domain independent problem solving skills uh, via the smart and sharp skill approach. And so uh, for those who don't know, smart and sharp skills are our vernacular for soft and hard skills. And uh, we're really intentional about putting students in situations that help them uh, develop these different skills. Uh, and, and through this, students are able to develop the ability to see, succeed in, in the most challenging environments. Uh, when it comes to uh, action learning, it results in, we think, transformational career impact, uh, strong outcomes at graduation and as alumni in Asia and beyond. Uh, recently, we, we did an alumni career survey and 80% of our alums were promoted within uh, three years of graduation, not 30 years of graduation. We're not even that old. Some of our students aren't even that old. And, um, and that's a fantastic stat because um, the, the industry norm uh, is, is typically 50% of students are promoted within three years of graduation. And for us to have 80% represents a substantial overperformance relative to the market. Uh, our salaries exceed the average for the Financial Times top 100 MBA programs. And Asia relevance is not just within Asia, it has a global portability. So 47% of our alums are outside of Asia. And then, you know, when you factor in the career impact and the financial aid, we're, we're, you know, the, the ROI is uh, without peer of the ASB MBA. We have market leading scholarships. All of our admitted students receive uh, some form of scholarship. Students also have access to interest-free deferred payment that starts post-graduation. And um, ASB as a school with a mission mandate to serve uh, the emerging world in Asia is really committed to providing access to everyone and financial aid is a means of how we do that. And so overall, our value proposition is without peer. Um, what we have is uh, from a total standpoint, we have uh, 83 students in our program. Uh, we're about 70% international, 30% Malaysian and about 43% uh, female. Um, while we've talked about the MIT element, our faculty are, are world class as well. Um, almost 50% of our faculty were academically trained at the world's best institutions, uh, are, are at the top, you know, 40%, 44%, almost half were, were trained at top 10 QS or Times higher education universities. 83% were trained at top 150 schools. So our, our own faculty based here in Malaysia are fantastic. And in, in addition to that academic preparation that they got, they're all MIT International Faculty Fellows. And what that means is they go through a mentorship process with MIT Sloan faculty to further prepare them to deliver in our curriculum. Uh, they're they're world-class and they have emerging world context. Uh, you know, Anella is from Oxford. She worked at the Central Bank of Malaysia. Han is from, uh, Hans is from Sweden. He, he's worked at, he's from the University of Chicago and he's held various international roles in banking. Uh, Professor Laura Donna is from Romania. And she leads our action learning. Uh, Eli, uh, Professor Eli is from the Philippines and got his PhD from faculty. And so we have that real world perspective uh, that you can't really get at many other schools. And we talked about smart and sharp skills. When we think of smart and sharp skills, those are the finance, accounting, economics, those technical skills that you need that provide the foundation for getting things done and the skills and the tools but the smart skills are what facilitate getting things done, right? And so that's the leadership, communications and engendering buy-in, creativity and problem solving, fostering that growth mindset, that global mindset and that ambiguity and the ability to manage ambiguity in a way that you can have maximal impact. Um, we cultivate those, as I mentioned earlier, with action learning. Uh, we believe, uh, you know, fundamentally that we're teaching you how to learn so that you can learn and problem solve. We think this is a future-proof skill set. Uh, it's, it's endorsed by the industry. We have a 70% repeat rate of hosts. Uh, we've, we've conducted uh, 200, oh, this is over uh, 300, it's over 380, and I, I didn't switch the slide out, so I apologize. Um, we, we do this through this, uh, our curriculum, our five semester curriculum. And what you'll see is that semester four, you could complete the program with option, uh, the 16 month option. Or if you wanted to continue on and take more elective coursework or give yourself a little bit more time for the job search here in Asia post Chinese New Year, uh, you can do the 20 month model. The action learning track goes all throughout the program and so does the entrepreneurship track, all right?
And the results, as I've talked about, they've been fantastic uh, career-wise. Uh, I love showing this slide. You know, Hamid and I, we did an analysis, a 10-year analysis of Financial Times full-time MBA salaries and uh, uh, EMBA salaries, comparing salaries across the different regions of the world. When you see Asia Dev, that's Asia Developing Asia. Uh, when you see uh, Asia Advanced, that's Advanced Asia, like your Singapore, Korea, Japan, USA, Europe. And the black bars represent the performance of ASB alums on an annualized basis in the emerging world and in the advanced economies. And so in addition to the promotion rate and affordability that we talked about earlier, 12% of our alums are entrepreneurs, 24% of, um, of our alums report to the C-suite. And when you compare the annual, annualized salary growth differential, uh, it's second to none. And so uh, we're really proud of that. Um, and so everyone, you know, we want everyone to be a part of this experience and have the opportunity to go through this transformational MBA experience. Um, the minimum requirements are a bachelor's degree, two years of work experience, and proof of English language proficiency. proficiency. Our, our next deadline is October 21st, uh, 2021. Uh, so uh, it's not too late to get in for the first round. We tend to have the most scholarship there. If there are those of you who are looking at the Working Professionals Program, that's a ways off till March uh, 15th, 2022. Um, this is uh, for the early admissions program. We also have launched an initiative for people who might be a tad young who want to get their spot in now. Uh, so for, for those of you guys who have less than two years of experience, you can, do a, you can apply for early admission. Uh, you're either graduating or have graduated uh, with an under, undergraduate degree this year or in the previous year, uh, or you're currently um, attending a graduate degree without full-time experience. And if you're admitted to this program, you just have to work two to five years before ex exercising the admissions offer to matriculate. Uh, and, and that deadline is April 1st. Um, and all our early, admit, uh, early, admit, our early admission candidates who are admitted receive a 50% um, scholarship. When they exercise the option, we can reevaluate for potentially more scholarship. Uh, the components of the resume uh, of the application that we're looking for, a resume, uh, cover letter to kind of assess your professional interests, your academic transcripts to evaluate whether you can handle the rigorous nature of the curriculum, uh, essays to see if there's a thoughtfulness to why an MBA, why ASB, a video statement serves as another tool to evaluate fit, and then two recommendations. And a GMAT or GRE standardized test is optional. Uh, and we offer, uh, if, depending on our evaluation of these seven factors, we offer interviews. All right. And so that's that. And uh, what we're going to do now, um, I've tried to save as much time as possible for our, our, our worthy, not students, but alums. Uh, and um, I'd like to go ahead and introduce, uh, go ahead and get the panel started with our alums in the program. And so we will start with... Uh, Ladies first, we're gonna start with Amelia Fong. And uh, Amelia, could you tell us who you are and a little bit about yourself, why you came to ASB and where you're at now? Uh, my, my pleasure, Sean. Uh, hi everyone, thanks for joining today. Uh, I'm Amelia, I am a Malaysian. I'm from the batch of 2020s, graduated right in the thick of COVID. Um, of course, when I was applying to ASB, what drew me to the program was actually the opportunity to have a world-class education um, right at the doorstep of my hometown, which was Kuala Lumpur. And uh, no regrets. It was one of the best experiences of my life. And uh, I think I only regret leaving when I did because I had no choice. Uh, oh, I now work uh, in Singapore. I should mention that. I'm uh, currently an account manager at a cosmetics manufacturing company. Uh, in my previous life, before my MBA, I actually worked in the entertainment industry. So I actually did uh, a triple pivot in terms of geography, industry, and role as well. All right. So then we'll we'll, we'll go with seniority uh, as far as graduation. Um, and so, Sharon, tell us about yourself. You, you've done a few different things in your post-MBA career. And tell us where you're at now. Yep, sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm... Sharan, I'm originally from India. So uh, prior to MBA, I had a little bit of experience in data analytics and then uh, a startup and agriculture. And 
Uh, yeah, what attracted uh, me to ASP is like, again, the world-class education, like action learning curriculum, which is, I, I don't think any other schools offer something like ASP. And also, uh, Southeast Asia is a very interesting place to be in, like emerging market. So these are the things that attracted me there. And I think I had a fantastic experience there. No regrets. Uh, amazing uh, batchmates, amazing experience during my MBA program. And post-MBA, uh, I joined AirAsia. Uh, so I joined in data team first. Uh, within a year, I moved to the product management. And in product management, I, I had opportunity to you know, uh, be in a really good spot where AirAsia was pivoting from uh, airline company to a super app. And I had an opportunity to launch like five different products. It was amazing. I would say it was a great experience. And now I am in uh, MIT Sloan doing the MSMS program. So which is uh, an option for ASB graduates uh, to pursue after the MBA degree. Thanks, Sharon. We'll go to Matthias. Yeah, good evening, everyone. At least it's evening here. I don't know where you're all calling in from. Uh, my name is Matthias. I'm originally from Denmark, but I've now been in Malaysia for about 10 years. Uh, I came from a background in greenhouse gas management, uh, primarily. Uh, and the reason I came to ASP is because I, uh, I wanted to go from sort of the project level sustainability work to more strategic level work. Uh, so I have the, the benefit of having just started essentially the, the job I wrote about in my admissions essay. Uh, so I'm currently the head of ESG for a company called Pink Petroleum. Uh, it's a subsidiary of DNEX, uh, Dagang Exchange, which is a Malaysian listed company. Um, before that, I uh, started a small startup company with one of my uh, MBA uh, seniors. So one from Mimi from Sharon's Patch. Uh, I graduated in 2019, I should say. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to, to answer any questions you all might have. And last, but uh, definitely not least, uh, from uh, dialing in from Scandinavia, uh, Kevin. No, no, <laughs> right, not Scandinavia, yeah. Italy. No, no, where are you at? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> All right, I'll 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 go ahead. It's it's an honest mistake, Sean. <laughs> uh, but I'm from Kenya, so I'm Kevin, and I'm from Kenya. Uh, I have a background in IT. That's what I studied uh, before joining ASB. I was in a ed tech, an ed tech startup, uh, and I was you know I worked on this national wide uh, project in Kenya um, on IT in education. And at the end of it, I was like, oh, I really want to go back to school. Um, and so when I was shopping around, I came across ASB and I was like, oh, this is the one, uh, you know, uh, it's it just looked all adventurous. And it's from. Uh, yeah. Hi, Sami. I see you from Kenya as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, I, w I went to ASB for for the adventure and for what it was. Uh, giving me in terms of uh, developing market, you know, um, or just the happening region. Uh, and so I should say that I'm in the same, I'm from the same batch as Amelia. We semi-graduated uh, last year during the, the pandemic, if we can call it that. Uh, and now, post my MBA, I'm working with a pharmaceutical company called Novo Nordisk. Uh, I'm in this rotational program, which is like an extension of uh, the action learning projects we've been having. So I'm doing a series of rotations. I did my first rotation in Kenya, where I was a product manager for eight months. And then I have since then moved to uh, Denmark, where I'm in the HQ uh, for another eight months. And after this, I'm going to move to a third location, which is Italy, which is why Sean was like, I don't know where this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we can talk, uh, you know, more about that if you have any questions. So that's me. All right. Uh, thank you guys. Um, super impressive, uh, su and super proud of all the, the great things you've done. Um, what I, what I want to jump to right away is, uh, how was, uh, how was the ASB experience different than what you expected when you got here? Who wants to go first? 
Uh, I can, I can go. Uh, so uh, I think my situation would be unique because uh, I was from the first batch, right? So I studied in the first batch and I didn't know what to expect during action learning. Uh, and all I heard is like, this would be this way, right? But we did not have any alumni who we could speak to, but took a leap of faith, uh, came in. And I think uh, action learning was one of the best components. Uh, and also, uh, in the, academically as well, like being a new school, uh, I didn't expect uh, us to have you know so much uh, good exposure, like so much great learning from some of the best best faculties in the world, right? So the case studies, whatever we had studied, we could apply directly uh, to our projects. It's hands on, right? So when we do this continuously for four to five semesters, then this mindset of problem solving automatically comes in, and uh, this helps tremendously uh, during our professional career as well, right? So many a times uh, looking at our peers, like we can say that uh, most of us have been very well trained and all of us from ASB uh, will perform pretty well uh, post MBA. Yeah, I'd like to just add to that because one of the things that surprised me is how much access you get at least some of the time during during action learning like you actually get to go into the engine rooms of the organizations you're working with and solve actual problems like, uh, i think it's samarji who usually says that they want problems that are important but not urgent due to the the nature of the uh yeah they have to be able to wait for the student teams to come out but but you really do get to grapple with, with actual business problems in, uh, in their natural habitat, if you will. Um, and so I was surprised at how, how much you actually got to get your hands dirty. Like, yeah, you hear it when, when Sean go out and, and does his sales bit. And like you say, yeah, well, that's great. You, uh, you go and you like, get entertained or get to entertain these uh, company folks for a bit. No, you actually get to go into, uh, like we went to a semiconductor manufacturing plant and actually go in the clean rooms, you actually get all of their production data. You actually go and see which machines have stuff piled up next to them, stuff like that. It's, um, yeah, it for me, it was much more, like real than I thought it would be. It, uh, maybe if I just added on to that, I think there's a common thing as to what we, what surprised us the most, and that is, uh, you know, the action learning projects, because it was the same for me as well. And I, I don't think I was prepared for how diverse, uh, you know, the experiences would be. Uh, it, it really could be, if you wanted, you could, you know, do this and be like, ah, uh, for my next semester, I think I want to go in this industry. And then for the next one in the other industry, it's like a whole buffet of very different uh, industries which you could gain experience from. So I think uh, I remember we once sat in the control room for uh, AirAsia for one of our projects and you can see you know how busy it is with people just managing flights and all of that and in a different project i was living with um with with an aboriginal community in the middle of the rainforest and for another i'm working with a, a vc farm in in jakarta and they're so varied and you gain so much uh you know such rich experiences from very different uh uh, situations. So I don't think I, I fully grasped how that would work. And Amelia, any, any thoughts? I'll, I'll take a different tack maybe, Sean. Um, I'm, I think what surprised me was, um, I would say the almost equal emphasis that is placed on smart and sharp skills. Um, I think I had a, this mindset that MBA is extremely academic, uh, very much an extension of your undergraduate years, but we would have, you know, entire weeks devoted to learning softer skills, you know, like um, 
intercultural appreciation. Um, and that has served me really well. And I think those lessons have actually stayed longer because you have to role play a lot of these um, uh, lessons that we need to learn. Uh, so what has struck me is I think how very practical uh, the MBA has been in the area like, that maybe I thought the least about before I joined. Fantastic. So uh, one of the things that um, I always love hearing about is the, the most unique or interesting experience you had on the action learning. Uh, and, and I, you know, I think those stories are, you can never kind of envision them happening. I think Kevin alluded to it, you know, being out in the rainforest. Uh, Amelia, you're smiling so, so hard. Uh, I, I want to hear your, you know, most memorable and unique experience on an action learning project. Yeah. I think I'm laughing because it's uh, to echo what Matthias said. It's it's scary how close up and personal you get. Um, so I'm I'm a student from an arts background. I've been an art student my whole life. Within I think one month of being in ASB, I was in Kedah, which is a northern state in Malaysia, a really really rural part, at an aircraft composite manufacturing facility. And uh, you know, looking at how basically uh, this factory is making this part, which you know I didn't even understand how it works on a plane let alone, um, you know, figure out whether I could add value to the project. It's impressive how much faith they place in us. Uh, and I think it also shows how much, how much confidence they have in the action learning process and trusting in the process um, after that one month, you know, from not knowing what I guess this honeycomb structure was, this aircraft composite product was, to kind of uh, winning a prize for having the best poster, for example, for this action learning project. It's kind of crazy to think how much changed in that one month. Um, so the wildest experience was just the very fact that I was qualified or deemed qualified to be led onto this uh, manufacturing site with no background whatsoever uh, in the in the industry or in the role. And I survived, yeah. All right. Uh, who else wants to share one? Matthias. Yeah, so I, I sort of alluded to it. So... One of the big things for me was was the semiconductor manufacturing plant. It's very similar to to what Emilio was talking about, like going into this. And I'm a political scientist by training, and so going in uh, to like getting the full uh, gear on, going into the clean rooms, uh, was an experience. But the other side was uh, a project we did with the Employees Provident Fund here, where they they needed to figure out how do we get um, people who are in the gig economy to save for their retirements, which like when we heard the problem at first, we were like, how the hell are we going to get any kind of data on this? And so what we ended up doing was uh, for about a week, we went on as many grab rides as we could, talking to, to drivers, figuring out, well, why are they driving grab? How, what are they earning? Um, What's their outlook on life? That kind of stuff, and I think we we got some pretty interesting insights, and and so I think sort of the thing that I'm really taking uh, taken from action learning is this experience that you or the confidence that you can go into an unfamiliar situation and add value in one way or another. So whether it's um, from analysis, whether it's from even sometimes just looking at things with fresh eyes, like when there isn't um, an, uh, an organization of gig workers that you can go and, and talk to, then, well, how do we contact people in, in the demographic we're looking for? Um, I think that confidence uh, is, to me, is the most important thing I took away from ASB. Kevin or Sharon? Uh, so I think I uh, have, uh, you know, from the action learning, there would be two main ones. So one is uh, in Timor-Leste. So I spent my summer action learning there. So basically uh, working on a project to improve the coffee ecosystem in Timor. So help set up the coffee association and also plan for the coffee fest, uh, nationwide coffee fest. So right, basically uh, we had to come up with strategy to make uh, the lives better for everyone in the coffee ecosystem, starting from baristas to farmers to uh, you know, the exporters and so on. So it was a very interesting project where I got to interact with 
senior ministers ministers in the government uh, adb people from i was working for asian development bank uh, then i could interact with people from un uh, baristas and also i spent a lot of time in the hills uh, speaking to farmers understanding how they work and trying to see like how we can build something where everyone can collaborate uh, collectively and uh, take the industry forward so this was a very interesting project personally and i think the second one was uh, again uh, an action learning project that i did in philippines uh, which was with the del monte so mainly we were just told like you know improve efficiency in supply chain but it was very interesting uh, and also i would like to thank the host that they gave us a lot of freedom as well so we were able to go and speak to everyone in the supply chain uh, and so they had uh, listed down some problems but while we were speaking we uncovered some really new uh, new ways where we could improve efficiency and looking it from fresh eyes right so as well as applying directly what we have learned in the classroom so this was something uh, that's amazing and i think uh, the project turned out really well and also uh, i think the best uh, part is uh, building the connection so when we go out together working as a team together so we get to know a lot more about our uh, team members and we build personal bond that would last forever i would say kevin yeah for, yeah for me i i think i'd already alluded to it but one of my favorite you know moments was uh my very first project which is you know the one i got to spend uh some time actually a total of 4 weeks uh in a very remote village you have to just you know take a boat upstream a river uh, to get there it's the only way to get there and spending a total of four weeks with just four other i mean three other fellow students and you guys don't understand what the villagers are saying and they don't understand you but you know you have a common project you're working towards uh and seeing at the end of four months that we were able to deliver value to 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 you know to that community and to build relationships with them that was for me just really amazing and uh what another really cool project i did was uh i worked with uh an eco resort in bali and for obvious reasons it it becomes one of my favorites as well uh but also because i'm you know passionate about sustainability and this this was what all these projects were about and they allowed me to gain experience in those fields so yeah fantastic um so you you guys have talked about being on a team environment and a diverse team and we take the diverse team and then we drop a diverse team in a diverse setting so it's kind of a it's a melting pot and, and what How, how do you think this kind of uh, impacts the ASB culture? Does it make it more competitive or collaborative, or, or what is your impact on, you know, these kind of experiences and what it does to the culture of the program? So, yeah, I would say ASB, at least in my experience, was a lot more collaborative than I anticipated. So, like, uh, I don't know, I had. a mental image of what an mba student is uh, that uh got thoroughly shattered uh on first contact with the enemy if you will uh and so uh like again people from every single uh yeah imaginable background from yeah 20 30 countries um and and really collaborative like that like you when you see like uh harvard business school depicted in movies or tv shows or whatever it's always like every, people with like razors on their elbows trying to like push other people down so they can get ahead i i hardly experienced anything like that i i think really realizing that people's different backgrounds had a lot of different things to contribute because the curriculum is so varied so like there's going to be times when the people with with hard science backgrounds have a leg up just because like they've done the statistic analysis they've done uh, linear programming whatever it is and then you have again times when you go over in sort of the smart skill category where 
you have some of the people from uh, with arts degrees or uh, political science in my case, or these things that that have a better like uh, position to to grapple with the material. And you very quickly realize that and, and it becomes very collaborative in, in my experience. I would uh, echo with Matthias on this. I think uh, like yeah, all, all of us uh, experience like a very collaborative learning environment. And especially everyone is like quite supportive. So just for an instance, like uh, in my batch, some, some students were struggling with like statistics or corporate finance. So someone who is good at it and who would have done it before in their prior career. So they took time to explain to others. So they're like, okay, I'm going to uh, explain this to others. Whoever wants to join can join. So that way it is like super collaborative. And also uh, having been in this diverse environment, having experience, work together in multiple action learning projects, multiple academic projects as well, or uh, working on uh, assignments and so on. So we get to learn a lot about different cultures and also how we can navigate uh, in the future. So this has helped tremendously, I would say, in professional career as well. It's after uh, we join a company, like uh, as we know, most of the companies now has like multicultural environment. There are people from very different countries. So this experience actually help us to, you know, interact better uh, and move forward. Yeah, I actually had to, I guess, listen to the question twice because um, there, I can't think of a single competitive moment. In fact, I can think of many examples where um, the class really rallied around to help each other. I think some someone in our class started like an Excel sheet where we could post job opportunities that we'd heard about or, you know, areas where we felt comfortable helping um, our classmates, whether it was um, reviewing their resumes or reviewing their job applications. Uh, I had many conversations with my classmates about how to negotiate, uh, you know, for a better salary or how to find, you know, that dream job. And I still speak to my classmates even now, you know, regarding, uh, I guess, the corporate life post MBA. And it has been nothing but uh, collaborative and not just collaborative, but it's even been almost like family, I would say. So, yeah, it's a hundred percent collaborative environment. It, it, it's so funny. I was just also remembering the very many instances where we had collaborative moments. And I don't know if Amelia remember this, but there's this one time we had an exceptionally difficult assignment. It, they, they do happen sometimes. And uh, since we the, the students all live together, I, I remember us working all of us together late into the night uh, to to come up with uh, to be able to finish this assignment and we still were not able to fully complete it and remember this is the whole class that was there together we actually took a selfie uh, at the end of it this was approaching midnight and we're like okay we're going to show this to the professor tomorrow that we did literally our best and put all our minds together and for me that's a really uh, interesting moment you know that showed how how well we worked together and like Amelia said this has gone on way even up to now we still reach out for uh to each other with any questions regarding work or outside so uh, very very collaborative okay um so great great answers and, and insight provided there one of the things you guys have you know been away from school for a little bit and so i wanted to um I wanted to get a sense of, uh, you know, how the how the MBA from ASB is kind of paying off from a career uh, perspective. Some of you have had job shifts, multiple promotions, different rotations, um, and so talk about how it, you know, the, the ASB impacted your career and your ability to secure what the current roles or uh, the roles that you've had since uh, business school. And we'll start with the person who's been gone the longest, Sharon. Sure. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, I joined, as I mentioned earlier, like I joined Air Asia and I worked there for three years and I think I got promoted thrice. So that was something uh, really exciting as well. And I believe it wouldn't have happened uh, if not for my experience in ASB and the mindset that uh, we developed there. 
right? So during uh, ISBN, uh, even in the act, in every action learning, we will uh, get trained in this, like focus on the problem first, right? So this is a very rare uh, skill set that I think uh, it would be very good to have, and many people generally don't do it. So, but since we would be done focusing on problem is like half the task done, like understanding what the actual problem is, right? So I try to apply that in whatever work I do. And I think that has really uh, paid off well for me. And uh, if, uh, many a times collaborative uh, environment. So that also like how we interact with colleagues, like how do we build the connections, trying to get a macro view before uh, going into anything deeper. So I think all these aspects uh, helped a lot. Matthias, you uh, you had an interesting path, and your 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 experience gave you multiple different avenues to pursue since you graduated. Um, yeah, so I've had uh, at least two uh, sort of of my of my breaks, if you will, uh, since graduation, where I'm very sure that part of part of what uh, got me in the door in the first place was was being able to say well it's this new business school uh, collaboration between MIT and, and Bank Nagara like that it gives you uh, uh, an air of like all right let's hear what this guy has to say uh, of course you then have to follow through like it it's not going to carry you the whole way but but in my experience, it, it does open doors uh, that that I don't think would have been open to me if I'd gone somewhere else. Uh, and so I I do uh, just sort of on the on the formal level. I think it's absolutely benefited. Um, so like my my current boss, I met for the first time. Uh, just after graduation. And so I, I had a, a talk with him then. Uh, he, I was actually introduced to him through, well, through my co-founder in the startup, but she was introduced through someone at ASP. Um, and so we got the benefit of the doubt uh, early on, then we, we executed, and then he had to put together a leadership team for, for Ping and and so he invited me to join there. So, so like, yeah, it's networking is incredibly important. Uh, I haven't always been good at it, but the times where, where it's worked, it really, really works. Um, and so, and that's also a skill that, that you get to practice at ASP. So yeah, I think all around there's been uh, a lot of benefit that way. Amelia, um, you had a different track. You your internship converted into a, a full time job. Like, talk to us about you know this experience, how it contributed to that progression, and, and positioning you where you're at today. Yeah, I think in my case, it's a very direct and obvious relationship. I would not have known about this job or even this company without the the deep relationship that the careers office has with my current employer, which is um, a new um, and also it allowed me the, the opportunity to get my foot in the door. So I also, you know, during the SAP, I suppose I had the chance to understand a new industry, the cosmetics manufacturing industry. I had a chance to, I guess, um, show my potential. And I was fortunate enough to have a hiring manager who would take that leap and that faith, you know, in hiring basically um, a generalist into, into this role. That definitely would not have happened without ASB. On a more practical level, I also wanted to highlight that um, for the first time in my career, I also negotiated my salary. And that's something I never would have done, uh, I think, without the confidence and the actual skill set, perhaps even uh, maybe a question list. I was very, very prepared uh, by the careers office and by Sean personally, you know, in that conversation. And uh, that's just a skill um, I did not have coming into the MBA. And yeah, that, that helps a lot. Um, the confidence, yeah, and the skill set, both of those, right? Thank you, Amelia. Uh, Kevin, you competed uh, for a role in a globally oriented rotational program in the pharmaceutical industry. And, and I remember from the career process, 
you had very specific things you were looking for in a company. Uh, and that, that's how you kind of, um, you know, narrow things down to Novo Nordis. Talk to us about why you picked them and then how you, ex uh, how did you stand out in the process and then what were the contributing factors from ASB? Yeah, Sean, you've, you've just reminded, uh, you've just taken me back to a conversation we had in your office when we were having a discussion about this. And yeah, uh, I may have mentioned this earlier, but I, I, have, I have very strong uh, feelings uh, regarding sustainable businesses, so sustainability, basically, so social and environmental. And so I was looking, uh, those were my top aspects uh, I was looking for when 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 find when trying to find a company uh, to apply to, and I didn't have a very long list. Uh, it, it was actually rather short. I, I remember uh, Sean and DW telling me, "Yeah, go go need, make a longer list," uh, which I did. Uh, and I, I sat in Sean's office and I was like, "Yeah, this is my number one company, and it's for this and this reason." You know, they are big corporate, but they have very strong. Um, sustainable practices. Uh, and so that that was my reason going in. And, uh, you know, Sean was like, okay, so if this is what you want, then let's, let's, let's prepare for this. And we went through quite a rigorous uh, preparation process, you know, both with uh, the CDO office, but also with uh, my classmates, my friends, I remember, I had to do so many things, I had to write an essay, I had to do uh, several rounds of tests I had to do. And then, and then in the end, there was this huge recruitment event that was supposed to happen here in Copenhagen. And then I think four, four or so days before, this is for the uh, actual final interview, uh, they canceled it because COVID. Uh, and I remember being very distraught because I was like, oh my God, this is not gonna happen. But, uh, I think when we eventually got into the final stages, uh, you know, virtually, one of the things that stood out most uh, was my experience with action learning because I was telling them, oh, this, this is a program that, you know, they're recruiting for a program where they place you in this environment for a, a limited amount of time and you need to, you know, add value. And then you move to, a, you're transplanted to a different uh, completely different environment and you do the same. And I was like, oh, okay, that I have basically been there, done that. And when you have to work on different projects uh, every four months, it means you have a very, you, you get very used to a steep learning curve whenever you start a new project. And that really built, that from ASB really built my, remember when uh, Sean showed the, the smart and sharp skills and one of the uh, I mean, one of the smart skills was handling ambiguity. That was really honed for me in each of the various action learning projects that we did. And I really showcased that during my interview process. And I was like, yeah, I would definitely thrive in, you know, this this uh, this program that you, you have set out. And for me, that was a winning factor, both for recruitment and it has also helped me, uh, you know, thrive in the, in, 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 in the program itself, because I've been through my first rotation, I'm about to finish my second rotation. And what I learned during my uh, action learning period has really uh, you know, been critical for this. So um, we've got a good question here. Um, you know, ha, you know Ham Savini asks, how did you grapple with imposter syndrome during the MBA itself, being surrounded such a diverse and amazing group of people? Um, we don't have time for everyone to answer, but maybe one or two. Does anyone have a, a, a strong response to this experience or? All right, Matthias. Yeah, I think if you don't have imposter syndrome at some point during the program, you're not paying attention. It's like your classmates have done all these weird and wonderful things. Like some people will have started companies. People will, a lot of people will have been in management positions. Uh, people will have raised money. Like there's going to be someone who's done something where you just feel, yeah, inferior, feel like an idiot at some point. Uh, and so just accept it as a, as a companion through the program and 
and then have faith that there will be other times where you'll make other people feel like that. So that would be my. Uh... And just to really quickly add to that, uh, I think if you're joining the program, it means you jumped through so many hoops to get there. And if you're already there, then it means you deserve a seat at the table. So just keeping that in mind. I grappled with that a lot. Uh, uh, Amelia can attest to that. We've had these conversations. Yeah, many times. But again, it's a family and it's a community. So even working through yeah. imposter syndrome, I think is, um, is a very valid skill to have. And that's something that very much this MBA addresses as well. So um, we have, um, you know, someone asked about Sloan Fellow Program. We don't have the Sloan Fellow Program, but we do have a partnership with, through our partnership with MIT Sloan, our students have access to their M Masters of uh, Science and uh, Management Studies program. And so Sharon is in that program. And Sharon, do you wanna take us through uh, that program? And he's just started there and, and what motivated you to pursue this route? Sure. Uh, so MSMS program uh, is basically uh, one year uh, intensive program where uh, it's completely elective. We are free to choose which subjects we want to select and uh, pursue our passion. Right, so this is uh, this sounds uh, very exciting. Like uh, and also I think the reason why I pursued it is basically uh, there was a lot of uncertainty immediately in the beginning of COVID. So I was like, so I just I was having conversation uh, with my friend who was doing this program here. And I did really hear a lot of great things about it. I applied, got in, but I took a deferral because I didn't want to uh, get into the online experience of it. And I had never thought of it again. But then I started speaking to more and more people who have done this program from different schools. Uh, and everyone had great things to say about it. And uh, also, I think uh, the experience here, I wanted to be in the MIT ecosystem in Boston build my network. So these were the main motivations uh, that I pursued uh, this program. And also I think uh, being part of ASP, you would be privileged. So this program is open for only uh, MIT Sloan's partner schools and ASP is one of the partner schools. So we'll have access to it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, give everyone an opportunity to leave a closing thought to the students uh, or the applicants here. And, um, you know, knowing what you know now, you know, two, three months before the program, what would you have done differently in preparing and getting ready for the MBA experience at ASB? I can go first. Um, so this is the advice that was given to me by an alumni before I joined. And this will touch on Vimal's question in the chat group. Like, What advice would you give to someone who's not sure about the MBA? Um, so for me, uh, the advice uh, was know what you want out of this MBA because you can do literally anything that you want in these two years. As you can see from the panelists, like the past post MBA are just really diverse. So you could go in with a personal, professional uh, goal, anything in between. And I think if that's your focus, you can achieve it. So I went in very much with the goal that I want to expand my global network of uh, friendships and professional connections. And um, I think I did do that. So uh, I wouldn't do anything differently. Go in with a clear goal and then you'll come out having achieved it. If you don't go in with a focus, I think um, there's just so many things to distract your attention because it's like a, it's like candy land in there. So. Anyone else? So I think uh, I I joined the program uh, what, just before my daughter turned two years old, and so I think the one of the things that's really important uh, if you are in that situation is to first of all say it is doable. It's hard, but it can be done. But you really need to to figure out. How do you schedule your time? How do you uh, deal with with things outside of uh, of school as well? And so, if you are a couple of months out, then yeah, make sure you have those conversations with your spouse or your uh, friends and family and so on. Like, uh, be real with with yourself whether it's a responsibility you can take on, uh, and then yeah, just go do it. Like. 
there is uh, it is a really great experience. Also, if you have to cut out some of the social things, like like I, I had to do, um, but the the professional, the academic uh, growth potential is really big. But but be honest with yourself. Like, can you do it? Like uh, Roberto Fernandez, one of the uh, the MIT professors who taught our first class, said taking an MBA is a market signal that if they torture you, you will cooperate. And so there's, I think there's a lot of, a lot of truth in that statement. And so, yeah, just take a hard look in the mirror and see if, if it's for you. And if you think it is, then, then go do it. All right. Saran. Yep. Uh, so I think, yeah, just, uh, being prepared for it, like preparing the mindset to, you know, go through this uh, rigorous experience and amazing, uh, fantastic transformational experience, I would say. And uh, personally, what I would have done differently uh, is maybe I would have brushed up basics on the subjects that I'm not familiar with. So I come from an engineering background, was not very familiar with finance and so on. So I would have uh, done that as well. Yeah, I think uh, that's, yeah, that's it. All right, and Kevin, we'll leave with you. All right. Uh, for me, I think it's, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd ask, I'd ask people to be more, to leave room for flexibility uh, with regards to what you want post the MBA. And I say this because my background, like I mentioned, was in IT, and now I'm in the pharma industry, and I'm like, I did not see this coming at the beginning. So just be prepared to be surprised, you know, pleasantly. So uh, that's one. And I think another one that was personal for me would be, I think I, one thing I'd do a little bit more differently, I'd, I'd, I'd make intentional effort to keep uh, in touch more with my family back home because it does get, you know, intense and you need to be intentional about uh, keeping your close contacts, you know, keeping contact with your, with, your, with your kin and with your friends. So I'll do that a little bit better if I went back. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, you know, these guys are fantastic uh, representations of the great things that go on the Asia School of Business. Um, feel free to check them out on LinkedIn. They're, they're a great group. And uh, we really appreciate you guys for making time for us tonight. Uh, this is a great session and we're, we're looking forward to see applications. Uh, from you guys. If you have any questions, please don't, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm trying to share my screen and just uh, give you a few closing shots. So um, follow us on ASB MBA at Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. All right. Uh, I think we have uh, some of the best social media platforms in Asia. And then if you want to connect with the team or one of our events, please feel free to uh, scan the QR code uh, schedule a call to talk with the admissions team. These sessions aren't really designed for individual specific questions. I know you people say, what about my work experience? We have, you know, what's the minimum work experience or what is the minimum test scores? We have no absolutes. We evaluate applications holistically. And so we'd love to talk about your case. So schedule a call with us. You can also connect with us on Unibuddy and chat with students and alum to learn more about their ASB experience. And with that, uh, I want to say thank you, uh, good night, and we look forward to seeing you at another ASB event in the future. Take care.